Exodus chapter 39. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together. By the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of his ephod that was upon it was of the same, according to the work thereof, of blue gold, of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen as the Lord commanded Moses. <clears throat> And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold graven as signets are graven with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work like the work of the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof and a span the breadth thereof being double. And they set in it four rows of stone. The first row was a sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, and a gate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a senior, every one with his name according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings, and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings of the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other golden rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the forepart of it over against the other coupling thereof above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings onto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate might not be loose from the ephod, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work all of blue, and there was a hole in the midst of the robe, as the hole of a habergon, a habergen, with a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twine linen. And they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe, round about between the pomegranates, a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about them the hem of the robe to minister in, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons, and a mitre of fine linen, and, go and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twine linen, and a girdle of fine twine linen, and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework, as the Lord commanded Moses. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like the engravings of a sin yet, holiness to the Lord. And they tied unto it a lace of blue to fasten it upon the mitre, as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto Moses, the tent, and all his furniture, his tachets, his boards, his bars, and his pillars, and his sockets. And the covering of ram's skins dyed red, and the covering of badger's skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread the pure candlestick with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for light, and the golden altar, 
and the anointing oil, the sweet incense and the hanging of the tabernacle door, the brazen altar and his grate of brass, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars and his sockets and the hanging for the court gate, his cords and his pens and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the congregation, the cloths of service to do service in the holy place and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work and Moses did look upon all the work and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it and Moses bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God the Father. <clears throat> Exodus 39. Inspection eternal. Inspection eternal. In Exodus chapter 39 that I just read, I was reminded of 38, and then the Father had said that there is an aspect of reflection that is in me. that I used from the very beginning. And that is to be able to call the light forward out of darkness. We know in truth, when you see your own image in a mirror, when your own image is reflected, we know that really it is light that is bouncing back off of a surface, back to your eye to give you your own image of self. That's called a reflection. We know that when you look into a mirror or you look into a clear space, some water with a darker background, when you look into a device of something with a clear surface with a darker background, that it is the light that has hit the clear surface has penetrated it, touched a dark background, and come back out, that gives you the image of self, the reflection, the light caught from the darkness. And the Father said that that holiness, that power is breathed into creation to be able to call light up out of darkness and to be able to reflect. Y'all got that? And as I read this next chapter, this next to last chapter, Father said that there's an aspect of reflection that I want my children to know about. That when you have the power of reflection, the power of reflection is incomplete. So we have reflection in chapter 38. We're coming to the end because Exodus is over in chapter 40. And in 39, he said that reflection in and of itself is incomplete. So in the beginning, I call light out of darkness. That's the ref that right there is that power. But in the end, at the end of it all, I looked over it and proclaimed it good and blessed it. He said, you must reflect, but inside of the reflection is also the power to inspect. Thus you have reflection and inspection. And we have, I bring to you, inspection eternal. Inspection eternal. <clears throat> In 
even just this week, even just this week, I have been challenged inside of me as a man thinking about that ability to inspect in different ways through various temporal and carnal experiences that the Lord will cause me to experience as priests to help to bring out the truth that he wants me to be able to reveal to his children. And so even this past week, I found myself, the very benches that you sit on, those benches that you're sitting on right now were ordered from a carpenter. And those benches were made several weeks ago. And I never went to go pick them up. I had been really deciding whether or not I was going, I was really ever going to pick them up or whether I was ever going to pay for them because I have not been happy with the work of the carpenter who's doing the benches. We have several benches that's made by him. And lo and behold, the benches upon further inspection. Some of the benches had for some sort of insect or something, or maybe a termite of some sort that were inside the wood that they were keeping over there, that they begin to eat through the wood. These are benches that are on the inside of a house. No termite should be able to even come into there to do that on freestanding furniture. And the termites have made their way and eaten through the bench. Some of the parts of the bench that he brought before also were rotted. And some of the bench has started to lose its form. Perhaps the wood wasn't completely dry before he started to cutting it and working with it. All in all, I have found that the craftsmanship of this carpenter was lackluster. Thus, I had thought I would not come and get these, but when I was gone, he came and dropped them off. And this time I was careful to inspect, which I hadn't done before. And I kept saying to myself, he keeps bringing things quickly and leaving quickly, but he never gives me the time to inspect it to see if it is according to its working purpose. And oftentimes he's catching me in the middle of me doing something and I'm not looking at the front and the back. I'm not flipping it over. I'm not twisting it around. But I had noticed that others, because me coming from the West, most of the furniture that we buy, most of the things that we consume since we're inside the matrix, we're going to stores and we're buying them. They're inside of boxes. You really don't have the power to inspect it a lot of times. If it's not inside a box and it's standing there, we also know that there was a process that was created inside the American construct that every item that's created inside of factories to some degree has to be inspected. Sometimes you buy things, you buy a pair of jeans or a shirt, you look inside of it, it'd be a small sticker on there, it may have a number on there like 39 or 42, and then under it it'll say inspected by number such and such, and it may have a little code on there. So thus, if you have a little problem with it, you know that they can track who inspected and who approved it before it left out the factory. We have multiple inside of America. They have multiple layers of people who are able to inspect things for quality control. To make sure that the thing was made according to what the company had desired when they said that they were going to endeavor to make benches. There are some things about living, living in a liberated existence in a place like Africa even that start to help you to understand the depth of some systems and institutions that man has tried to create that mimic the power of the Father. But the more that I learn, the more I see, the more I see that all of the intelligence, as much as they try, it all began with the Father and they haven't done anything new. But as a person who grew up in the West, inside the construct, you find yourself a little bit behind the eight ball. Learning things new that you probably should have known long ago. And I notice <clears throat> that when I take my motorcycle to get it washed, the other guys are getting their motorcycles washed. And their motorcycle may be getting washed and they're sitting there, the young African men, and the guys washing the motorcycle may even be older than them has nothing to do with it. He has endeavored to wash motorcycles. He needs to do this motorcycle 
with every amount of diligence because I'm going to inspect it. And those young men, they look up into the motorcycle, they look behind it, they look in every crevice and they say, no, you missed a spot, you missed a spot. No, you need to clean it, you need to clean it, you need to clean it. And I had noticed that I had been socialized in the West, A, to be lazy with inspection, B, to not care so much. C, if I was going to inspect, to think that it's annoying when somebody is inspecting something for quality. And to think, I don't know if I really want to be that person to point out where somebody has gone wrong. And I've had to develop because I am a, a leader and I am a dad and I'm in this family and I have younger people that the father has trusted their custodian ship to me. To have to, even though I'm socialized somehow, that there's a seed planted in there somehow to say this part of reflection is called inspection. This part of reflection is called inspection that the father demands is a part that you need to let go. It's something that we don't really do much. We can leave that to the companies. We can leave it to the machines. It's something that we as humans in the West, we have let this thing go. And that's a problem. Because the father says that that process of inspection is embedded into what we do. And it's a part of holiness to be able to inspect so that something holds the standard that it was created to hold. We may find ourselves reflecting from time to time, but I noticed that that power to inspect is something that has been undermined in the West, even so to make people uncomfortable if somebody tries to do it. <clears throat> Just the other day, two days ago, me and my wife, your mother, we went to the big city to get a few things. Well, medium city, big city in this area, to get a few things. And we left a list and we said what we wanted to be done while we were going. And when we came back, I looked around, I'm like, okay, it's looking okay. I'm doing brief reflections on what I had said that I thought goodness would look like. I said, what did I ask him to do? And I'm looking around, I said, okay. Then what I asked him to do is being reflected in their work and it's being reflected back to me because that thing that I asked him to do, I'm seeing it. But then as I broke the threshold of the door of the house where we do most of our business. I start to look around and I notice upon further inspection that it wasn't according to the specs that I had laid out. It wasn't according to what I have previously established as the standard for cleanliness. There's one pastor, he was talking about strongholds. And he said, strongholds are secret places where Satan resides in the inner soul. Strongholds are secret places that Satan and his spirit resides in the inner soul, known only by the person. And when you get there, rather than him being uprooted, he would rather you be ashamed of it. To not shed light. Did you hear what I said? To not shed light on the darkness, to not have truth to be had and then to cast the demon out and to get rid of the stronghold. So pastor, I've been following for a while. <clears throat> G. Craig Lewis. And I know him and I know people who affiliate with him and I respect him as a pastor. So when I heard what he said, I had to think about it. And then the father caused it to pass. And I said, this is correct. And deep within the recesses of my soul, that very day, I sat down inside and I had to wrestle with Satan. Inside of a stronghold, a seed that was created in the construct, in the matrix of America that said, 
we don't inspect, it makes people and us too uncomfortable. And I said, dang, it's Friday. I want the kids to have a good time and everything. But if I begin to inspect this house, it's going to ruin it. And we may not be able to on Friday have a nice time and enjoy each other's company as we bring in the Sabbath day as we've been working hard all week. And I start to look around. I kept saying in my mind, I can't let the truth not be said, though. And I'm like, but I don't really want to ruin everybody's mood because I know that the children would like my approval. And I came to a moment of a satanic stronghold and I said, well, but these children respect and know me and they know that I stick with the truth. And I have to find a way to make sure that the light is called from the darkness. I have to find a way to let them know you didn't pass the inspection. And we still got more work to do. I was so uncomfortable inside of me. But finally I sat down and I conjured up the strength to call the light forward out of darkness to cast Satan out. And I was able to speak to you all and I was able to say, hey, you guys, listen. Take a look at this over here. Take a look at this over here. Take a look at this over here. Take a look over this over here. Take a look at this over here. Now, listen, we've got to do better. Why don't you guys take the next hour or so and get this thing done? This is not according to what you know that I have stated previously that is the standard for cleanliness. And I expected this to be clean when I came back. It's not so. Let's take some extra time and get this done and let's move on. Inspection eternal. Now we've come to a moment where we've seen that the Father has given even to his furniture. Inanimate objects, he has given it the blessing to be called his. And I stated unequivocally that there are some who quibble about the pronouns that will be applied to them. And I said, it won't stand. Today you could be him, his, it, her, according to your own proclamation, but it won't be ratified by the Father. And in front of him, and as it concerns your eternal life, you may get somebody at your school or at your job to call you him, her. You will never get it from me. But I'm saying for all eternity that the Father even will give a pronoun to an inanimate object and give it life before he gives it to you. You won't get his approval either. As the pieces of the tabernacle come down a conveyor belt, And the father sits there and expects each article and places his sticker on it. You won't get the sticker. You won't pass out. You will not have eternal life. You won't be blessed. Why? Because you don't conform to the original specs and the standards that he laid out. In your life, as a woman, as a man, if you don't conform to the original specifications that the creator laid out for you in your purpose, you will not pass the inspection. I'm going to pass it. You got people all over the world, they think it's a game. They think it's up to them. I'm going to be he, him, he, she, it. <laughs> You're out of line with the initial specifications. The father who created you says, this one is a man. It's not a woman. 
This is the way a man should behave. Read Titus. This is the way a young man should behave. This is the way an older man should behave. This is the way a man of God and a priest should behave. This is the way a woman, a young woman, and a young lady should behave. This is the way an older woman should behave. It's all laid out over the scriptures, the specs. And if you don't conform to them, if you find yourself doing something different, you won't pass the inspection. That's the point. So you can play around all you want to with your time. You play all you want to in the dark. And with people who don't want the light to be called forward to conform to the word of God so that they pass the inspection after they've been reflected upon. Inspection eternal. That a part of holiness and a part of the Father to create involves this inspection and they're ripping it from us. There's a number of institutions that the Father instituted that you will find that Satan strategically sets up strongholds. He strategically plants seeds. He strategically maneuvers in very subtle ways to set up institutions. Mental, spiritual and physical institutions that confine people and people find them, themselves in these confused spaces where they find themselves uncomfortable with the ability to inspect. I never knew, really knew that about myself. So I got to Africa and I realized, wait a minute, man, these guys are doing work for me and I've been paying them to do the work. And this is a house that I'm going to have to live in. And yet sometimes I'm not careful enough to stand there with him and say, no, let's look at this corner. Let's look at this brick. Let's look at this. Let's look at this window. No, this window. This one doesn't seem level. This is something that I'm going to be living in for many years after you leave. And this thing needs to be inspected for integrity. I found myself like, man. But I noticed that many others, Africans, have no problem. Walking up and saying, nope, 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 nope. This ain't going to go. That ain't going to go. That's not going to go. Because they're free. And Satan hasn't approached them into that stronghold. In the West, you look out for his institutions. I'm warning you all to look out for his institutions. If you're in the West, if you're in America, if you're in these matrices, these constructs for these super developed nations, you ought to look out for the institutional strongholds that Satan has developed to take away from you, to strip away from you the things innate of God that he has given you that's going to help you to function on this earth and to have eternal life thereafter. And one of those things as we're coming to the end of the Exodus is the ability to first of all reflect. That's why none of you all, most of you all, do not obey the Sabbath. You don't reflect upon the previous week and whether or not you've created according to what God has said to create, whether or not you've created anything that has life, whether or not you've created, done, created or done anything that's going to stand, whether or not you've created or done anything that could be determined good by the Father. You don't do that. You won't do that on Saturday. And then afterwards, he gave me the chapter. He gave me the chapter afterwards. He said, not only do they not reflect, but they don't inspect nowadays. Thus, this young man can walk up and he may have changed the length of his hair. He may have done a number of different things to the outside, to his body. May have cut some things off. He may have even taken some pills. And you may look at him, train to look at him in the West and say, oh, that's a girl or that's a woman or it's she. Well, I'm going to call her Stacy. Judith. Ruth. And upon further inspection, it should reveal to you, no. No. Indeed, this is Cain or Lamech. But that level of inspection has been given to us in the West as an institution that it makes us uncomfortable to have to inspect somebody. 
I even noticed as I was leaving out, back in the day with the older people, you would leave out the house in the morning, you would go to school or whether you was going to church, no matter, even whenever you was leaving out. And before you would leave out, a lot of times in the, in the older school homes, they had a, they have a mirror right by the door or they'll have a mirror on the back of the door of the closet where you get your coat to put on to go out. That's by design. If you go into, I don't know what the newer houses are doing inside of them. Some of the ones that are mick mansions that people are throwing up with a bunch of drywall. I don't know what the construction is, whether they've moved off of what is known as a good institution to carry about certain human tasks that just make sense. If you go into older places, you will find that they put glass or mirror near doors so that people can inspect themselves before they leave out. It's an old adage, and I know, that even as you leave out, your grandma would always call you and say, come here, let me look at you. And they may put a little spit on their fingers and clean a little crud out of your eye. Or take a little cloth and wipe your face off or put a little oil on your face. Wipe your hands off or tell you, go put some lotion on real quick. They just give you the once over to try to inspect you to make sure that you're conforming with something that is appealing, that looks good. To make sure that you're conforming to what they're expecting from members of their family. You understand? That's how it was in the old days. It started to be that even when I worked into the school, I would come to the school and I'd be like, dang, it's, they don't got a grandma, they don't got nobody at home because the kids would show up into school routinely as if no one had inspected them whatsoever. Inspection eternal. Satan in his stronghold, sneakily, taking away from us the desire to inspect as if the need for inspection is erased. No. I'm going to repeat that. Satan taking away from us the desire to inspect as if the need for inspection is erased in the world. But you're going to have furniture with termites in it that's not going to stand. It's going to fall apart. And it won't live. And it says that at the end of the process in chapter 38, that Moses had brought to, was brought by the children of Israel. Everyone had came to Moses and they brought everything. Everything that the father had done and they have been working at this for quite some time now and i'm sure they had to make some different changes to it and get some things perfected and they finally brought it all to moses in one hit all the priestly robes all the candles all the tables all the veil the tent all the everything you name it they went down the whole list they brought it all even down to the small gold rings even down to each stone that's on the ephod of the breast of the priest, even down to looking. Moses even went to look at the hem of the garment of the priestly robe to notice that around the hem of the priestly robe, there was pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, all the way around. And not bell, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, 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 bell. Down to the detail. Moses, the man of God, understood the power of inspection. And thus the Father gave to him the power of the blessing. Did you see that? You don't want to inspect because Satan has discouraged it. But you got the nerve to try to lift your hand to bless? No. The Father has now told us that this power to inspect is the thing that gives rise to the blessing. But nobody wants to inspect nowadays. Or are you thinking you about to bless without inspection? Or are you think you about to bless something that did that won't pass the inspection? It's an impossibility. 
It's got to be bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, bell, pomegranate, all the way around. It's so bad in the construct to where even with the computers, people are writing code. Code takes an extreme, ex extreme attention to detail to make sure those ones and zeros are lined up just perfectly, that you didn't put a comma, you didn't put a period in, a semicolon in, you didn't put two sets of parentheses instead of three, instead of four. If you got an open parentheses here, it's got a close over here. This coding thing is a real attention to detail thing and people are well trained to do it. And now the computers have easily surpassed what man is able to do to be able to read through code, to inspect the code, to make sure that that code will work. And man has relinquished over. To the computer, the ability to be able to inspect Something that you once created has now become a god over you. Sound familiar? Something that you have formed with your own hands, you now worship as a god over you. You've given it your ability, your power to inspect. How can you ever be blessed? Father will hit you with irony, man. This one right here, Christ came. He came up out of the water. The dove landed upon him and said, This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. They went off into the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights. Satan challenged him and he came out all good. They did everything to him, put pressure on him and broke his body. He said that when the last time he got together with the men who had loved him, except for one who betrayed him, he broke it. And he said, this is my body that was broken for you. You can take it and eat, though. And he let them know that in the next few days that they were going to apply that pressure to his body and break it. And thus to remember him that we will continue to do this. And he said, take this eat this my body that was broken when these people who want you to relinquish everything that the father had given us to be able to hold and conform to what he has ordained for us in our purpose they're gonna get you to try to relinquish it all he said hold on to it real tight even if they put pressure on you and break your flesh and that's what this is about thus every single time we remember him that we continue to partake of the bread the broken flesh that symbols the holding on to our father's specifications. So that we may live. And we held on so tight to the father's specifications and obedience that eventually they spill his blood out like they're going to do every single time. He said, don't worry, that blood is all good. Not one drop that spilled to the ground wants the father revenge. And not one drop will the father ever forget when he can raise it all up. And he did come back within three days, showing us the power to defeat death and have eternal life if you live according to the specifications. In one scripture, he had told us, he had told us in prophecy, he said, and if I, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. In a moment of prophecy, the Father gave him the words to give to us so that we would know forever that he was telling the truth when he came. And he said, and if I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And they did lift him up, didn't they? And they crucified him so that everyone would see, didn't they? They did exactly what he said that they would do. 
And through their own evil, everything that Satan meant for wickedness, the Father meant for good, they did lift him up. And I couldn't help but think, when he said that he be lifted up, that he would draw men to him, I couldn't help but think that it's so great to be lifted up in the end so that the Father can easily inspect you and that those looking on can inspect and that the blessing can be had and not lifted up in a worldly sense that you will sit on top but to the contrary through that suffering through that long suffering obedience that you will give rise to a moment of men to be able to reflect on their actions and to inspect something that had completely conformed to what God created it to be and know that through that, he also may be able to achieve it as well. Light, reflected in light. In the name of our Father. The one who gives us the code, that gives us the ordinances, that gives us the commandments, that gives us the specifications, and calls us forward in light. In the name of the sons, in the name of the son, that was able to come forward and undergo the inspection willingly and fairly and to be proclaimed good and blessed that we would have an example. To be able to do the same. Paul's inspection. In the name of the Holy Spirit.